All right, so let's switch gears. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, what we can do um, to keep our pictures organized. So I'm going to share with you that I'm pretty organized when it comes to pictures. So uh, how protected you are is up to you. First off, if you have your pictures on just one hard drive, that's disaster. Angela, how many copies of your photos do you have? Oh, goodness. Purposefully um, copies. <laughs> purposefully copies. I've got one, two, three, four. Four. Okay. I think so. And, and our, is one Malia of those stored off site? Yeah, two Malia Vaults, Time Machine for my Mac, and um, yeah, Backblaze off site. Okay. Actually, five if you count. Nope, five. I've got a Cloud Vault too. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think Angela gets it, right? So Angela would have to have catastrophic failure at three locations for her to lose her pictures. Now, that's protected, but all of this that you've done now, Angela, it's completely automated, right? It just happens. Every time you add a new picture, it does it. Exactly. I don't have, it's, it's nothing I have to think about. Now, every once in a while, like maybe once a year, I kind of do an audit, make sure things are working the way they're supposed to, because sometimes settings change and yeah. things happen when you upgrade different things. So you want to make sure that those systems continue to run. But other than that, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. It just all happens in the background. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to show you how to set up Milio to have everything backed up and then show you the benefits of having a universal photo library that works on all your devices. So there's lots of tools out there. I like Milio for this, but there are other tools that you can use. So you can check those out too. And um, you have to decide how much you want to be organized. So for example, I could see the folder structure of my library. So there's my Android phone. There's my iPhone. Here's my Milio inbox that I can share to from other apps on my tablets. Here's all my social media, Facebook pictures, Instagram photos, my Flickr photos are all backed up and pulled right down. In fact, my Facebook ones even have the same folder structure as how I originally posted them to Facebook. If I wanna go back and find a story or reshare some pictures like, hey, that visit to Dubai, I want to repost some of those pictures that I did when I got a chance to visit UAE. So you can find all of that stuff, but everything is in one universal library. It can work with scanned photos. So I can actually go in and start to assign metadata information so that I can see when this picture was taken and where this picture was taken. So you can actually go in and edit all of the date information and geotags on your scanned photos. So it's pretty cool. And so this just makes it easy to actually tag and organize that way. And so this is what's kind of happening. And Angela's gonna walk us through the setup, but my point is, here's my big raid that all my photo apps see. There's my entire photo library with 20 plus years of photos, plus some aperture libraries I brought in, plus my time-lapse library, and things like scanned photos, my phones, my social media, all in one library. So when I go to do a search, I can actually search on a word, for example, like I type in the word prints. And it found pictures that I tagged with prints, as well as my friend, Gary Paul Prints, who was tagged as well as actually read the text on the sign, prints on the street sign. It works with documents, release notes, everything. And if you go and add metadata, like face tags or ratings or anything else, all of that is gonna actually carry back to other applications. So you can tag people and have that material come through, which is pretty cool. If you go, oh, wow, uh, when I took this picture, when was that? show me that and you could take a look at it on your calendar or you could reveal that and go right in and say show me that folder where did that come from and now oh that was when i was at south by southwest in austin and there's the pictures from that trip see you could jump right to things and so it's a universal photo library that has everything connected in one single place this is my ipad so on my ipad I have shrunk that photo library down to 1 20th the size. 
So Mylio can optimize things as raw files to 1 20th the file size. So you can go in and actually work with the raw data. So you can enhance, you can edit, right? So I can jump in and say, hey, I wanted to work here. Let me go into that trip. And uh, oh yeah, that trip to Amsterdam. And I'm finding things. Oh yeah, let me take a look here and just find a picture that you wanna work with. And look at the speed here as I'm just navigating through that library. Oh, let me check out this one. And when I go to edit that picture, it actually allows me to edit the photo. And on your tablet, you actually have all of that material. So if I say, oh, let me flag that as a pic. Or you know what? Let's just keep looking through here. I can go through, oh, that's blurry. That's a reject. And I can actually mark these with stars and rating and metadata or it's a raw file, I could do basic enhancement right here on the file itself. And notice I'm working with actual raw data here. So it's a small raw file that's 1 20th the original size. And when I go back, all of that syncs up or I can share right from the device. So I'm walking around with my entire photo library from 20 years on my iPad. And it takes up about 400 gigabytes of space. So Milio is able to shrink your photo library to 1 20th the size while keeping it raw and letting it sync to your portable devices. And you can do basic edits while on the go. You could rank and sort. Angela, what's probably the most unusual place you've organized your photos? Oh, goodness. Um... Unusual. I mean, it, I don't know that it's unusual, but I mean, probably while I'm on vacation sitting in a condo that we rented up at Mammoth, I was able to bring in pictures from my trip, um, add keywords, add metadata, uh, geotags, everything while I'm sitting there in the condo from my iPad or from my phone. So, you know, I could go out to breakfast the next morning, have my phone sitting there and be working on those. Awesome. Pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I've done it while in the grocery store line. <laughs> so I've managed to, to call through photos. So Angela, why don't you go ahead and share your screen and start to get a setup. And then uh, after you walk us through the, the general setup, um, I'll throw in a couple of power tips of some things I like that the new update added. But uh, yeah, Angela's gonna show us how to get this set up. Angela, you could start on either a phone or a computer, but for most of our audience who probably has a hard drive, they probably wanna start on the computer, right? Yeah, starting on the computer is definitely easier. Once you have your computer set up, then you can add a phone or an iPad, um, ta any Android tablet, so forth. And that whole setup goes much easier once you have the computer set up. Um, if you start on the phone, you can certainly do that, but computer is way easier. So I have Milio Photos pulled up, and this um, assumes you've already gone to the website, you've created an account, and you've downloaded the software. It's a really simple process. All you have to do is enter your email address, create a password, and then the next screen that pops up says, hey, do you want to download it to text your operating system? You grab that, let it download, and then you can get that from your downloads folder on your computer, whether you're on Mac or Windows. Double click on that, follow the steps on the screen, and once you launch Malia Photos, this is the first thing you're going to see. Now, as we go through these first screens, I do encourage you to read through them. There are some interesting and helpful things here. Um, but there, you're going to be conf confronted with a couple of decisions. So one thing I'm going to tell you about what the system I'm setting up here is, is I have some photos on an external hard drive and I have a brand new hard drive that I want to organize things to. So what I'm going to do is first add that empty hard drive and then I'm going to add in photos from the external hard drive that already has my photos. And that's going to back up the photos that are on that first on the drive that I've already had that already has photos. And it's going to start that backup process for me automatically. So, so let's go ahead and walk through this. That yeah. step is optional if you if you already yes. have a backup solution. But what Angela is suggesting there, and this is really easy to do, is you know pick up a, a drive. Angela, I bought one the other day from Seagate, 
And uh, I got an 18 terabyte hard drive for like $300. I mean, it's insane how low the prices have gotten. So that's just great to set up a new backup drive. And that's what you're doing here, right? You picked an empty drive exactly. as your backup drive. Exactly. And that's not required, but it does make things easier. And it's just a nice, clean way to get started with Mylio Photos. Um, today is Cyber Monday. There are some really great deals out there. So if you need something to get backed up, today is a good day to shop. So let's go ahead and walk through these screens. And I'm going to go through them somewhat fast just because I know what's already here. So the next screen is here for me to log in. Whatever email address you use to create your account with, when you downloaded the software, that's what you're going to enter here. So let me go ahead and just do that. And it's always fun to try to type when people are watching, see if I got my password right. And while you're typing that, Angela, Richard said he he got a he bought a hard drive with a free subscription to Mylio, but it had a 25,000 limit. Correct. Seagate does include uh, access to what's the Mylio Essentials plan uh, yes. with many um, of the It's hard actually drives. the Create plan. Sorry, the Create. is a little bit different. That's right, sorry, Create. Uh, and that has a 25,000 limit, or you can use that to upgrade to full unlimited Mylio at half mm -hmm. off for that first year. So that's included with a lot of Seagate hard drives. Uh, that offer will evolve over time, but for right now, that's what they're doing with a lot of their hard drives is they're giving people uh, a year of Mylio, but a limit of 25,000 photos total. Um, but you can have unlimited Mylio. I've got uh, about half a million pictures in mine. Yeah, if you jump from the Create to a, a premium subscription, there are no limits. There's no limits on your devices at that point. There's no limit on the number of photos you can have. You know, what you can do with it is is crazy. It's sky's the limit. All right, so the first few screens here are going to ask you about where your photos are stored. Um, and it's wanting to know where your things are so it can pull them in to Mylio Photos. So I'm just going to click through these. Um, one thing to note here is that Mylio is not a cloud service. We do not see your pictures. We do not store your pictures. All of your photos main are maintained on devices that you control. So that's one of the big differences between Mylio Photos and a lot of other um, applications that can bring things into a single location. Cloud is fully optional with us. We don't have a cloud. You can add a third party service. But for the most part, everything stays where you put it and is under control by you. So but your great. devices can see each other over the internet. So yes. they don't need a cloud. Like I just leave my Mac mini and hard drive running and I can access it from anywhere while I'm on the go automatically. So the first thing we're going to do here is set up our first device. And what we need to do is create our Mylio library folder. And we highly recommend that you put this Mylio library folder in a place that has a lot of storage. So for the majority of people, that's going to be um, an external drive. Or if you have a desktop computer with a ton of storage space, you can put it there as well. We do not recommend putting your Mylio library folder on a laptop or on, um, you, you can't even put it on a phone or a tablet. But um, desktop computer or an external drive are your best bets. In this scenario we're going through today, I'm going to put it on an external drive. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we're going to choose the Mylio library folder. And since we're putting that on a fresh, clean drive, I'm going to create a new folder and go forward. Now, to be and clear, Angela, you can install Mylio on a laptop. I've oh, absolutely. You just, you're just not choosing to back up all the files to that laptop. You're only keeping the optimized files on the laptop. Exactly. Exactly. You can still get to everything from your laptop. You just don't want to overwhelm the storage space there. So what the Mylio library folder does is it's the default location for all of your future imports. So any photos that you bring in, that's where Mylio is going to want to put them unless you specify a different place. So over time, that can really quickly fill up the hard drive on a laptop computer or even a smaller hard drive on a desktop computer. So just be mindful of where you place that so you have room to grow because we always keep taking and making more pictures. So it offers me a default location. I'm going to change that location and I'm going to choose a location for myself. Now I'm going to scroll down here to, I've named it new hard drive. So that's really easy to find. And I'm going to create a new folder on this hard drive. So we're just going to call this Mylio, make it nice and simple, and say create and open. And now it's giving me a new path. It's on my new hard drive in a Mylio folder. And we'll say it looks good. So it's setting up Mylio Photos for me right now. And we've got a new Mylio Photos library that's completely empty. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. 
And if you start out with an empty library, it's going to offer to let you install the sample library. If you want to poke around without any commitment up front, this is a great way to see what a fully organized library looks like. So I'm going to choose install sample library. And this is going to run through a few things and bring down this, this, this library from our servers. And the great thing about the sample library is it's got some awesome photos. It shows you what that organized library looks like. And when you're ready to be done with it and you want it gone, it's super easy to remove. So let me go ahead and click through some of these boxes here, get rid of that. And now I can jump over to all photos and I can see all of the photos that are in the sample library. And there's a lot here. We can also jump over to the calendar, view everything on a calendar. And this is probably one of the most fun places to start when you are browsing Mylio Photos because you can take a look at your life in photos and this becomes even more fun once you have your own images in here. So I can click into 2022. I can click into any of these dates and I can see these photos on an actual calendar. When I click onto a day, it's gonna take me to every photo from that day, regardless of the source. So it's going to pull photos from my phone. It's gonna pull photos from my folders. All of these different sources will get displayed in one central place, which is really fun. If you have a camera that geotags photos or that you've added geotags yourself, you can view everything on a map and see where you've been, maybe where you still need to travel. As you go through and tag people, you can easily find all of the people in your life that are important to you. You can see all of their pictures grouped together. So let's take a look here. We've got a folder here for Rich. So here's a picture of Rich. And right now it's zoomed in onto his face. We can easily go up to the more menu and uncheck zoom to face and we see the whole photo in context. So it's a really fun way to explore the people that you photographed over the years. We have can albums. You, can you show, how, before you leave that, can you show how to tag new people real quick? Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump into this picture. We can turn on the face tagging icon here and we see that Rich has been tagged, but his wife hasn't. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, Megan, right? Yep. <laughs> I was spacing on your wife's name there for a second. <laughs> so now we've tagged Megan and that photo, if we go back up to double click on the people view and we go down to this collection with photos of Megan, we can see that that photo is now part of this collection. There's also photos here you can see that have a check mark and an X. This is a suggestion. So Milio has started to recognize Megan's face and it's saying, hey, we think this is another photo of her. Is it or is it not? So you can accept that suggestion, reject it, or you can even choose a different name if, you, if it's somebody else that maybe a sibling who looks similar, but it just happened to catch the wrong person. So we can go yeah, ahead. I find, I find Miley is quite good. If, if you tag somebody as a, a baby and then as a teenager and then as an adult, it pretty much handles the entire lifespan. Yeah, it's it's remarkable. I mean, I I did this with a few photos of my grandmother who's 95 now, and I have several photos of her throughout her life. Um, and most of them obviously are her older years since I was born. I started plugging in some pictures that I have scanned of her when she was young in high school and it found her. It was amazing. I yeah. just, it blew my mind. Now, Richard asked a good question about, don't you also recommend cloud storage since there could be a failure on the hard drive? So um, we're gonna talk about this one more, but I'll give you the short answer, Richard. So you can always have more than one vault. So what I have on my system is I have three vaults. One of them is at my physical office. Two of them are here at home with me. And then I also put my smart previews up to the cloud. But Mylio lets you selectively choose what goes to the cloud. So if you only want to put your five stars or your four stars to the cloud and not back up everything, you could do that to contain cost or you could choose specific folders. And if you do go to the cloud, Mylio lets you encrypt the data so nobody can see it, not even Google or Amazon or Microsoft or anyone else. So they can't actually scan your photos looking for information. And I'll show you what that looks like. Like You'll be amazed at what you can find inside of photos uh, with some of the OCR and image recognition searches. For example, if you open up Amazon Photos, you'll discover that they've counted how many hats and scarves you have. And there's a tag for sandals. Why is there a tag for sandals? Well, so when I go to Amazon and I shop and I search for sandals, it shows me the brands I already own and buy so that I make a purchase decision more quickly. 
Amazon actually indexes your photos to make shopping recommendations for you. That's pretty crazy what, what those services can see. So this is kind of gives you an idea of how you can view and, and, and uh, work with your pictures inside of Mylio Photos. But this is working with a sample library where it really gets fun is where you add some of your own images. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna go up to the add media button and I wanna choose adding media accessible from this device. And that lets me choose things like a memory card, an external hard drive, things like that. And I can pull those pictures that are on those locations into my Leo photos. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I have a drive here called my photos. And we'll let that load here for a second. And I have a folder called my amazing photos. So I'm going to go ahead and open that folder. And then Milio gives me a list of options. I can move them, which physically moves them on my computer from that external hard drive to that new hard drive that I just set up. I can copy them and that'll create additional copy on that new hard drive that I set up that Miley will watch them there and ignore what's on the external hard drive. Or I can link them. If I just want Milio to see them where they are, leave them alone, but watch that folder, then you can choose link. And this is what the option that most people are gonna wanna choose. So I'm gonna choose link and link now. And that's gonna start bringing in those photos. And what's happening there in the background is it's going to start watching that folder. So any new photos that I put into that folder will be automatically brought into my Leo photos. And it's also backing them up to that new hard drive. So if I jump over to the dashboard and go down to devices, you'll see that I have new hard drive here, which is designated as a vault. And a vault is going to hold everything. That is your entire library. And it's gonna to want to have everything from every source backed up in that place. So that's that new hard drive we set up. And that was set up by default. We didn't have to do anything to tell it to become a vault. When you add a hard drive in that fashion, it just becomes a vault and that's gonna start backing everything up. If I go up here to add device, I can add a new external drive and by default, that's going to be another vault. If you just wanna add pictures, you just go up here to the add media. And then you can see that from that add media, it also added the my photos, but it is not designated as a vault, meaning it's not putting a bunch of extra stuff there. It's not going to take all of the pictures that I maybe already had on this drive and put them here as well. So it helps you manage where things are stored and make sure that you have a drive that's big enough to be storing that backup. So that's why I choose that new hard drive to be my new backup drive. Anything there to clarify, Rich? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's jump over to the folders view. And this is a physical representation of what's on your hard drive. So you can see here's the sample library under shared content. And then I can scroll down to the My Amazing Photos folder that I just added, which is linked on that external drive. So I can go into this folder and I can take a look at all of the images that I just added. And these are some of my favorite photos, obviously. And I can go through and start working with these. I can add ratings. I can adjust the date if the date's off. So maybe there's some scanned images in here and the date's incorrect. Those are really easy to fix. So let's go ahead and choose an image. All you have to do is click into the timestamp and you can adjust it. But even better, if you click on this little menu here, you have a lot of different options. So if it's a scanned photo and you know that maybe this was taken in the summer of 1986, you can go ahead and go down to season and year and choose summer and then scroll back to 1986. Yeah, I like that because I'm as I'm organizing pictures from like yearbooks and scanning in old photos, I might know the general season or the month of that trip, but I don't know the exact date. And so this way, when I search by date, it still shows up. Yeah, I mean, and this is really helpful for things that are within your lifetime. Um, if you're scanning things that are maybe your parents or your grandparents, you might only know that, hey, this was taken in the 50s or the 30s. You can go down and choose a year or a decade. And if you really have no idea when an image was taken, you can always mark it as undated. And what this does is it tells Miley where to put it in your life calendar. So if you go back to the calendar view here, and let's double click to go to the top level and scroll all the way to the top, all the way, all the way, all the way, we have this undated category here. And this is where everything that you've marked as undated will reside. So it's a place to put things you're not sure of, or maybe even think of it as a to-do list for things that you need to research. 
And then you and, can start and everything that the you calendars. do assign a date to that gets assigned as the capture date, not the file creation date. So mm -hmm. like you can actually adjust it. And so other tools can see that. So like if you're browsing in other photo apps, the, the correct dates would now show up. Right. So it's, it's a really great way to work with not only your current photos, but also to see those of your, your past and your family's past. So that's something that's becoming an increasing um, goal of mine is to get more and more family things into my Leo photos. I actually went to my grandma's house on Saturday this weekend and my mom brought a bunch of stuff and my aunts brought a bunch of stuff. And we looked through documents and pictures. And I now have this project of scanning in a bunch of additional stuff. So it's it's really fun to be able to see your life and your your history in photos here in Mylio. Uh, with Mylio, that's going to give you the ability to put all that stuff together into one network. So that's what I've done here is you can see when I look at my folder structure, so uh, your uh, camera rolls are there, there's the inbox, and then there's the library folder uh, when you've imported. So when I say connect with uh, Instagram, for example, it just asks me to log in. And if I'm already logged in on that device and I allow it, it's gonna automatically sync up with Instagram and bring in any new pictures that I had recently posted to Instagram and add them into my Instagram backup. Same thing with Facebook, it would automatically bring those in. So um, all those things are there. And in this case, this is my main RAID. So this is my photo library. And if I say, show me this on the finder, you're gonna see that it's the actual hard drive. I can't point to it, but it's right up there. And so this is my Thunder Bay A. This is my uh, RAID that still has 67 terabytes free. It's, a, it's a, a 90 terabyte RAID. And here's my clone copy right here on B. So I actually have these two mirrored. Um, but I can have all these different drives connected and it sees it. Now, one of the things I want to point out, and we're going to go through different workflows here, but is that this is just kind of like a photos operating system. So you don't have to edit inside of Mylio. So if you want to do an external edit, Mylio makes this really quite simple. So you could hand off to any editing tool. So let's say I wanted to uh, do an external edit. Well, I can select any of those pictures that I want to work with and just grab them, right? I can select a couple here. Let me select uh four pictures here. There we go. Then from the photo menu, I could choose edit in. And I just open with here and I could pick any application I want to edit with. And when I do, Mylio gives me the ability to hand off the original raw files if I want or to do a conversion. So I can hand that off very easily. And it's the same on your mobile application. So if you're on your mobile device, so if I pick a picture that I wanna work with, and maybe I decide I wanna edit this, I could just tap the menu. And if it needs to, it will download the full quality picture to my device or I could have handed off the smart preview. But what that literally did is it just pulled down the raw file right to my device. And now I could choose where to open it. And so it connected on my device and grabbed that. And then you could hand off to an external editor. So it's pretty cool how those are all connected. So like I could say, take that to Photoshop Express. And it's gonna open that up. And so it literally connected to my home network and grabbed the raw file down. And it just handed off that raw file here from my iPad to Photoshop Express, which is pretty amazing. And so now I can do whatever I need to under adjustments. For example, uh, maybe I decide to apply lens correction and I want to do some light adjustments here. And I can go in and dial in the changes that I want, right? 
So all of these things are in there and you can actually affect it. So, hey, go ahead and lift the shadows, right? And so notice here how I handed off basically to Photoshop on my iPad. Go ahead and put a little vibrance in and then let's dehaze and put in a little clarity as well. There we go. And so you can make any of those adjustments that you want. And then when you're all done, just tap the button and you can send it right back. And so this will let you choose and you can drop it right back into Mylio. And now if I switch to Mylio and I go to my inbox, it's gonna be there inside of my inbox right there. And so it will drop in that new picture in just a second and it will pop up there ready to be moved or navigated. And so it's really cool how easy it is to hand things off. You wanna to go to another app, you can just select the picture and again, tap the share button and use the quality you have if you want or have it pull down the full quality. And you see here, as long as you're connected to one of the devices, it's able to actually download that full quality one and it will pull it down to the device and then do the handoff. So it's pretty cool. All right, Angela, uh, you ready to, to do a few tips here for us? Some of the other cool things we can do? Yes. So no what all do we want to cover here? I pulled up my library. I've yeah. got all sorts of things I can I can show and share, but what would what do you think folks would like to learn most? Well, I think why don't we talk about some of the ideas of getting organized? So sure. like cleaning up folders, uh rating and culling and, and those things we can do um remotely, uh, or how you can organize on one device and then um all of that syncs back to your main library. Excellent. Well, I have some photos that I took last night, actually, that we can do this with. And I did go through and do some of this already. Um, and I did this from my iPad last night. So I was able to take a card reader from my iPad, plug that into my iPad, and import my photos right there into my Leo Photos. And what it did over my home network is it transferred them to my vault. So if we go jump over to the dashboard here for a second and take a look at the devices that I have. I was working here on my iPad, and what happened while I was sitting there is it was syncing up to each of these vaults. So I have a vault connected to this computer, I have a Drobo connected to another computer, and it was also uploading to my Amazon Drive. So all of these were happening while I was working on my iPad and importing things here. I haven't actually looked through these pictures much on my big computer, because and, I just and you, to play and you with don't even have night. to be on your home network for that to work, Angela. I've been yeah. traveling at a hotel, imported on my laptop, and by the time I got home, everything I'd imported on the laptop was yeah. already backed up to all my hard drives at home. Absolutely. So let's take a quick look here. I'm going to jump to, um, let's just go to the calendar view, and we can take a look at all of the pictures that I took yesterday. So I'm going to scroll down to 2022. And I have a filter on apparently. So let me go ahead and clear this and go back. There we go. And so what happened there is I have events set up. So let me just go back and show you where it went was to all of my pictures from my mammoth vacation, which was this summer. So I've set up events so I can quickly get to those images for those particular events. So I accidentally clicked on one of those and that's why it took me to those photos instead of everything for the year. So I'm just gonna click out here on the, on the year. And now I can scroll down to November. And here is what I took yesterday. So went out for breakfast and some coffee in the morning. These are from my little Sony camera. It's um, a handheld point and shoot. And then I've got, you know, a picture here of my Christmas decorations from my iPhone. And this is all coming into a central place. And I'm pulling in from all of these different sources. And then most of these images down here, there's probably a couple that I took with my cell phone. But most of these I took with my big mirrorless camera, my Canon. So these were at a light show at um, a place called Santee Lakes. It's a park here in my town. And went around driving and took some pictures of the lights. It's It was a lot of fun. So you can see that some of these images have geotags. These are the ones that were probably captured with my cell phone. The ones that don't were captured with my mirrorless camera. So what I can do is I can grab these images that don't have geotags and I can easily add them 
here in Mylia. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna grab a range of photos. So I'm gonna click the first one, hold down the shift key and scroll down and click the last one. And what I can do is jump over to the map tab here and I can type in Santee Lakes. And let's see what it finds. So it pulled up my city, but it didn't pull up the lake. So let's try one more time. Or actually I can just grab this here, make this bigger. So let's grab this and scroll out. And so there actually, there is where those ones from my cell phone were tagged. So I can grab these images and I can just drag them right to where it was tagged for these other ones. Adjust the placement. And then I can go ahead and accept that placement. And now all of these images, you can see by the tag here, they have the little pin for GPS coordinates. And give me a second here. Let me turn on my cursor notification yep. here so you guys can see it a little bit better. And while you're doing that, so Richard uh, asked a question. He said he travels a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, don't I need to leave my computer on to back up to Mylia? So you have a choice. Uh, you would either need to leave your computer on, or if you have cloud storage, you can use the cloud as a temporary storage. And so you could selectively tell Mylio only back up these folders to the cloud, uh, and it would automatically back up to the cloud. And then when you turned your home computer on, it would pull that down. So a lot of people have some free cloud storage already. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, I get a terabyte of uh, free storage uh, with my Microsoft uh, Office account. You can use that. Uh, so some people already have cloud storage that they can target. Or um, in the near future next year, uh, you'll be able to target a NAS, uh, which is a network attached storage. So you, uh, Milo will be releasing an update uh, mid middle to early next year that will let you target that NAS and it would automatically back up. So you could just leave that plugged into your network at home and not leave a computer running, but just leave the NAS plugged in. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else can we do with these images? I'm gonna switch back to the info tab. And this is where if you click on an image, you're gonna see all of the pertinent information about these photos. So let's add a little bit of extra information. I'm going to select all in this category. And you'll remember here at the top, there were a few that were not related to this light display. So I'm going to hold down my controller command key and deselect those. But I wanna add keywords to the rest of these that indicate where I was and what the event was. So I'm just going to put that here under keywords and I'm gonna type in, let's see, Santee and maybe Santee Lakes and Holiday Lights and Christmas. So now I have all of these keywords that have been added to each and every one of these pictures. So if I go up to my search and I type in holiday lights, it's gonna pull up all these images and anything else that I might have tagged with the keyword holiday lights. So those are some fun and easy ways to add additional information to your photos to make them easier to find later. You don't have to go through and tag each and every one like, some people can get really granular with this and be like, okay, I need to tag these ones with Santa. Let me make these a little bigger so you can see them. So we don't necessarily need to tag that with Santa or we don't need to tag this one with Christmas trees. You certainly can, but that tends to get a bit tedious. So I like to have a little bit broader categories, broad, broader keywords that just kind of trigger and help me find what I'm looking for. Um, a couple of other things we can do here are, um, Let's see, we can add our copyright info. So again, these were all pictures taken by me this entire day. So I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna do command or control A on my keyboard and I can go down to the IPTC and I can tell it these are all mine. So if I go down to the bottom, I can click apply IPTC card and this is gonna apply my copyright and contact information to every single one of these photos. So if I ex export this photo with my metadata embedded, if somebody wants to reach me about licensing one of these photos, or maybe they want to buy a print, this information is going to be embedded in that JPEG that maybe I post to Facebook. Yeah, so that's and, and all, all that metadata tags and keywords you added, any other application can see that. 
Um, Absolutely. Before you go forward, Ron mm -hmm. asked a question, Angela, that says he's got a lifetime of images already on an external hard drive. Uh -huh. uh, is it a long process to bring them into Milio and reorganize them? That's a great question. So it, um, it really depends on the size of your library. So if you have quite a few images, let's take a look. I have in my entire library, 102,000 images. Um, it is going to take a while. That first time that things come in can be lengthy. Um, if you can bring them in a little bit at a, at a time, sometimes that works a bit better. But you but, can but certainly you don't have do to the whole chunk wrong. at once. They, they, if you link them, they stay in the same place. Correct. So what happens at that point is Milio is just going through, it's creating the thumbnails and those preview images that you're going to see on your other devices. It's going through and it's searching for faces and searching for text. All of those things happen in the background that first time you bring things in. So it can take a while, but um, stick with it. It's very worthwhile. Once you get that first major um, batch brought in, it goes much faster. So like bringing in these images that I shot last night, it was almost instantaneous. It was so fast. Yeah. Um, the, the, the key here though, is that Ron, you don't have to start over. So like I linked right. to my external library on that Thunder Bay drive, Lightroom links to the same place. So does Luminar, mm -hmm. Radiant reads from there, Photoshop reads from there. So you don't have to move things. It can see existing things. What Angela's talking about there is it has to make those smart previews which are the small raw files that are a 20th the size. And that's what goes to your mobile phone and tablet and laptop so that it doesn't eat up your storage. And so that'll take a little bit of time in the background. Nothing crazy. It's just as fast as importing into Lightroom. It's just most people don't import an entire lifetime of photos into Lightroom at the same time, but you're not locked out. When you add a new folder, it's still very quick. You can immediately keep going and keep working. Uh, it's just going to take a little while before those photos are backed up to your vault or syncable to your other things, but you don't have to change anything else. Correct. So once you've gone through and you've added some information to your pictures, what you might want to do is find the ones that are your favorites that maybe you want to work on further and get rid of any of that are blurry, that maybe are, you know, really poorly exposed that you just know you're never going to do anything with. So let's take a look at that next. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and X out of the search and go back to our day here in the calendar and start at the top. And from here, I can, in the info panel, I can open the ratings bar. And here we have our flags, our star ratings, and our color labels. I can do all of my rating and tagging here if I want to using keyboard shortcuts. Or if you're on a mobile device, we've got some really great gestures. Um, so if I wanted to keep this one, I could flag this as a pick. And if I want to move through these more, more quickly, I can always turn on auto advance. So as soon as I flag something, it will move to the next image. So I can say, you know what, I like this one. And I might even like that one better. So I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to go back to that first one. This one's not as good. Maybe I want to mark that one as a reject. And what that does is right now it grays it out in the film strip. But I can actually have my Leo hide these for me as well. So I can go up to organize. And I can tell it to... Um, Actually, it's not in the organized menu, it's in the more menu. This is a new feature, so I'm still trying to remember where things are. Um, I believe I might have to be, oh, it was at the top, wasn't it? Yep, show rejected photos. Yep, there it is. I can turn that off and it's gonna automatically hide those. It doesn't delete them, it doesn't get rid of them. They're still in your hard drive, they're still in your file system. They're just hidden in Mylio photos. So this is one way that you can kind of curate and make sure only your best photos are visible and showing. And I can go through and say, maybe the ones that I flag with as a pick, maybe I wanna go in and edit those a little bit more. The ones that are rejects, I wanna throw away. And then there's gonna be other ones that I'm like, I like those, but maybe I don't wanna do anything with it right now. So that one's kind of fun. Let's go ahead and make that one a pick. That one's not that great, but I'm not gonna throw it away. So I'm just going to hit my arrow key and skip it. Same, skip it. That one's kind of fun. We'll pick flag that as a pick and so forth. And I can move through them fairly quickly. We also have a really cool uh, mode called quick review. And that does something similar, but it kind of clears out other distractions so you can really focus in on your photos. And again, that's up here in the more menu and we can go here to quick review. And you'll notice that takes away those sidebars and some of the other stuff and it gives you a really great way to just focus in on your photos. So now I'm looking at just my images. I have a ratings bar here, auto advanced. So it takes it from one image to the next as I rate them, that's on by default. And I can go through and use those same keyboard shortcuts to quickly move through all of these images. So I'll flag that one as a pick. 
I'll flag that as a pick. Let's see here. There's two here. I can slip, I can use my arrow keys to kind of switch back and forth, see which one I like better. I think I like that one better. This one is kind of cut off because I think the car was moving. This was an event that we had to do from a moving car, which was not ideal for shooting at night. Um, I would have loved to have been set up out here with my tripod and gotten some really great photos. They just weren't letting us. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as a reject. This one I processed a little bit on my iPad, but I'm not really fond of the processing. So I'm going to actually mark that as a reject. That one's kind of cute, but it's not great. So I'm going to just move on. And I can move through these very, very quickly and mark the ones that I want to work with and which ones I want to get rid of. So this is the quick review mode. And once you're done here, you can either hit the X on the toolbar or hit escape on the keyboard and go back to the regular Milio view. So it's a really yeah. great way to sort through things. Can I show that on mobile really quick, Andrew? Absolutely. All right. So I do this all the time from my phone and tablet, because remember, you're actually able to do it remotely. So you can load a folder in and just sync it to your, fo to your phone as smart previews. So here's what I like. So here I have an entire big photo trip that I need to organize. So I can go in. And when I choose a folder, one of the things I like is you can flatten the view. So instead of seeing all the subfolders, like of having to go three levels deep to see everything, I could just tap the more menu and say, oh, show me all the media. And it flattens everything to one single view. And then you can sort by date or alphabetical or, or whatever you want right there. Then when you go into the quick review mode, you can use those gestures. So swipe to the right is a pick and swipe to the left is a reject. So if I say, you know, I like, oh, I don't want this one, swipe to the left, it grays it out, it's a reject. So you can just go right through and do picks and rejects with a series of swipes. And so it's very simple. So if I say, oh, you know, this is a bad picture, it's blurry, reject, it's now grayed out. And that is actually flagged so that I can clean those up later and delete them and it's gonna clean up my hard drive at home. Yeah. Or I can drag up and down and actually assign star ratings. And again, that's actually changing the star ratings. And so you can just go through and rate very quickly, reject, reject, and see how easy it is here to either assign a rating or a pick. And so this lets you plow through your library very quickly and mark your best pictures. And again, you know, the speed here, I'm working on a tablet. Look at that performance and speed as you're able just to fly through and, and jump around. So here, these are some low light pictures, but let me get going. There we go. And you could see that the I was shooting a time lapse here. So I'm just going to jump forward past that time lapse. You're like, why are they all black? It's because I shot a sunrise here in the jungle. But again, look at how quickly on an SSD you can call photos, okay? I just wanna point out, and here's some pictures from my cell phone mixed in. Now, what's really cool here too, is if you get pictures that have metadata, you're like, oh, where do we stay? What was that hotel? I, I wanna tell a friend, oh, this place has this wonderful view. Like I was able to shoot this time-lapse movie from this balcony here, and uh, we are able to get these great shots of this volcano. Right, So it's pulling down the movie now to my tablet from the hard drive. I'm not going to be patient enough to wait. But if you have GPS data with one tap, you can say, oh, go ahead and show me that on the web. And it will actually launch a web search. Or in this case, it connected me right through Apple Maps to, <laughs> yep, that was the place we stayed. Let me go to their website. Let me make a reservation and book. Let me forward this to a friend. I was able to reverse lookup based on the G GPS tag, where was I? If this wasn't a hotel, like let's just say I had GPS data uh, from somewhere else, like, you know, we were somewhere else on a picture, I could then reverse look that up again and like get driving directions to that location or do a web search. But this is so great because you're able to do all of that. And when you exit, all of that information has been updated on your pictures. So you're able to really target that stuff very, very quickly. So it's just wonderful to be able to process photos like that and know how simple it is to step in. So as we go through here, 
you know, when I find a picture, I could check, you know, that one a little bit not so good, you know, low light picture. But I can go through and be checking things like critical focus and say, is that sharp? Right. And so it's wonderful to be able to check and actually, you know, take a look at your pictures there and see footage and photos all mixed together. And so in this case, you can have all of that. So I've got all this material in one single place. And I am working with small raw data. So if I want to check, can that sky be recovered? I could actually work with that raw file right there and say, oh, yeah, that was totally fine. You know, that's a recoverable file. So you get a nice basic adjustment there. And you can see the before and after of working with that small raw file. And again, half a million photos are taking up about 400 gigs of space on this iPad. And everything is in a small raw format and fully accessible here with that type of speed. So it's great to know that you have everything at your fingertips, literally. And so when a client calls or someone asks you, have you ever been here or do you have a photo of that? To be able to jump in and find that material and to be able to work with that sort of stuff is just awesome. Working with raw data there, right there on the tablet and phone. And again, if I ever need to, with just a click, I can go right to the full quality file and with the tap of a button, download all that right to the device. So if I decided that I wanted to do a handoff here and I wanna work with that full quality file, that one looks sharp, right? You can go through until you find one that looks good and then grab it. And so it's that simple, tap and download and full, pull the full quality raw files right down to your device. So you see now under info, I'm working with the Olympus file there. That was a JPEG. Let me switch to something a little bit meatier. Here we go. We'll go to Canyon Negro. And I'll open that up. I see that that's a preview file. Tap, download. It connects over the internet to my network and it's gonna pull down the full quality raw file and that will switch. And I could see here, I have the ORF, which is the original raw file available. So now I'm zooming and I could check and do you know one-to-one -one pixel zoom and check for sharpness and noise right there on the tablet. And again, do whatever editing I want or hand off to any editor that I have on my device. And so you can go really anywhere that you want to do that edit, tap, and it's going to open it up. There you go. And you're free to edit. So you can use any tool that you have on your iPad or your tablet and have full editing capabilities available, like you see here. And I'm just using an alternative to Lightroom here called Darkroom. But I'm working with the actual RAW file right on my tablet. So I love being able to have my entire photography collection at my fingertips and grab things whenever I need them from home without forgetting. So as long as you have that device on, uh, you can do that. And even if you do want to use the cloud, the key is that Milio gives you selective control over the cloud. So when you upload to the cloud, here's my iPad, Windows computer, Windows computer, main Mac that I'm on, my laptop needs one picture, my iPhone needs seven new pictures downloaded, right? And you can see how everything is going. Like right now, I set up some new cloud backups, but I can go under here to Google and say only backup five-star photos. Boom. And now only the five-star pictures are going to the cloud or put all my previews in the cloud, but for originals, only put the ones that I've used the blue label on, apply. And now all of my labels, pictures that are blue are backed up at full quality to the cloud. So it's pretty awesome what you can do. And when you set up that cloud to begin with, you get the ability to choose to encrypt it if you don't want people seeing your pictures. 
Angela, I know that you've learned this working at Milio. What are some of the things that they could see in your pictures that people don't think about? Well, the text, um, you'd be surprised at what the optical character recognition in Milio can read and pull up. So Rich is pulling up a an, an, um, few images here where he searched password. And if you're bringing in things from your cell phone into Milio Photos, um, you've probably taken screenshots of things that you've likely forgotten about. And these are gonna be in your library. So if you're then sending those things from your phone to the cloud, let's say those are going straight up to iCloud, guess what? That screenshot you took of your password is up in iCloud and it's not encrypted. Um, if you're saving things to Amazon Photos unencrypted, those are gonna be visible to that cloud service. What Milio Photos lets you do is put those things in the cloud, but it encrypts it. So only Milio can read it, which keeps it private to you. So you're seeing right. here on the screen some very, very personal information. Which I'm going to close now. But the point is, is that how many times have you had to take a picture of your credit card because mm -hmm. they ask you to upload your credit card? That's on your camera roll and it's now in the cloud. Yep. So something to think about. <laughs> yes, so. definitely. Cool. So I'm going to pass back to you, Angela, but I hope people see this ability to have everything uh, on a tablet or phone is pretty cool. And the speed is just amazing when you're dealing with smart previews on a device. I mean, you could just fly through a picture library and get right to what you want very quickly. You know, yeah, and then go an in. example of that is, again, when I was at my grandmother's house on Saturday, we were looking through some pictures. We found some ribbons that my mom had won for a science fair. And I remember that there was a picture that I had scanned, actually it was a newspaper clipping that I had scanned of my mom in the paper when she had won this uh, ribbon for a science fair. And I was able to quickly go to her collection of photos in Milio, pull up this newspaper clipping and have that right next to the physical ribbon that she won, show those to my grandma. And my grandma was you know, able to take a look at those and we were all reminiscing. It was just, it, it's just really neat that you're able to get to those things at your fingertips from your cell phone, from your tablet so quickly. Yeah, I typed in the word eagle <laughs> and here it was reading the text in this brick. You know, my son got a brick when we made a donation for his Eagle Scout. My daughter did too when she got hers, you know. So it's actually reading the text right there. And I was able to find the picture just by reading that, you know. And so, and, you know, speaking of things that aren't photos, yes, start to scan in your own old pictures and newspaper clippings and yearbook things and put them in there. But don't worry because you can mix personal and private together because at the top level when browsing, you could say, hey, only show me stuff that is in this folder. And so I could apply a global filter and say, just show me my time-lapse library. Boom. And now all I'm seeing are my time-lapse photos. And when I go to all the views, it's just showing me time-lapse photos, right? Only things that were in the time-lapse library are gonna show up. So when I step into there, those are the only things that are actually on the device and the other stuff isn't there. And so you have the ability to filter by folder very easily and narrow that work down so you can mix personal and private together. Okay, Angela, let me pass back to you. So there's a couple of features that I really love inside of Malio Photos. One of them is photo dedupe, which allows you to find exact duplicates so you can clean up tremendous amounts of hard drive space. So even if you've been very careful over the years and tried to keep everything very organized, chances are you're gonna end up with duplicates somewhere. Maybe you imported a memory card twice and you didn't realize it, things like that. Photo dedupe lets you clean those things up and free up hard drive space. So you're keeping only one copy of an image. And that's not to say that you're not having your backup copies on your vaults. That's not getting rid of your backups. That's just saying if in your library, it has cataloged the image twice, you can change that so it's only cataloging one image of that one of those images and then backing up that one image instead of backing up four copies of it. Um, another tool that we just introduced is called Photo Declutter. And this one is really cool. And I have a lot of work to do in my library. So I'm going to show you that a little bit here today. Um, and what that does is it helps you clean up burst mode photos. So whether you're shooting motorsports, kids sports, um, just kids that are running around and playing, any fast moving objects, if you're into bird photography, anytime you're sitting there with your camera, your cell phone or your big camera, and you're sitting there pressing down the shutter and getting that burst of photos, 
chances are there's only one or two good shots in that burst. But you have probably thousands of images that you could capture over a day at an event like this where I was at the drag races, um, where you're sitting there and you're hoping to get that one image where the front of the car is lifting off the ground as it's taking off. And out of a series of you know 20 images, only one might be good. Um, I haven't gone through and cleaned these up because there are literally thousands of them. And photo declutter makes this process much, much easier than going through and scrolling through one at a time and taking a look and seeing what's there. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch this tool. I'm gonna go up to organize and choose find similar photos. And this has gotta be probably one of my, one of my favorite new tools that came out in this most recent release. So there are some steps here. You can follow through these blue boxes and learn a little bit more about the tool. I'm gonna to close that for now. And when you launch this, it's launching looking at your entire library. So what I wanna do from here is I wanna filter this down to look at a specific folder. So I'm gonna click the filter icon, choose folder and then select a specific folder because sometimes looking at everything in your library in this context can be a little bit daunting. I like to um, kind of bring that down to a more manageable level. And I'm gonna scroll down and I think, was there one more instance of this? Do, 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 do. Okay, that was the one. Forgetting which date that drag race trip was. So let's go here to this one. And you can see there's over 2000 files here. I guarantee there are not 2000 keepers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and that's going to filter to just this particular day. And then as I go through, you can see these sets of similar images. Now in this one here, this is because I have a couple of edits that I've done in addition to the original. Those are similar, but I don't wanna get rid of any of those. Um, and you can go through and see some of these that it's flagged. And this is with it set at zero seconds. So anything that was less than a second, but if you're holding down that shutter, chances are it's gonna be for a couple of seconds. And you can take this all the way up to two minutes I usually like to keep this probably around five to six seconds because that's really about how long that I'm holding down that shutter. Two minutes um, is for the landscape people who set their camera on interval to take like a picture every minute during the sunset or people like mm -hmm. me that do time-lapse photography and we just wanna collect all the files together because you can actually use things like move in here as well. So besides deleting yeah. pictures, you can actually move pictures to a new location. So this is good for cleanup as well. Yes, exactly. So let me go ahead and scroll down here to find a, a shot that we need to go through. This looks like a good, good candidate right here. So let's go ahead and open up these images. Now this has the film strip here at the bottom and I can move through these with my arrow keys and see what happened here. And it looks like maybe my sort order is backwards. So I'm actually gonna go back to the first one here. Um, and I can see which ones were interesting. You can see they're starting to move. They're just kind of getting ready, but there's really not much interesting happening here. And there's where they go start to take off. And you can see his front wheels leave the ground right there. So that's pretty cool. There he's really off the ground. So that, those are pretty awesome right there, but now he's off the screen and that's not a very good picture. So I can go through these and I'm gonna hit the space bar here because since the front end of the car is cut off, there's no reason to keep this one. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this one to delete and I'm just hitting the space bar or I can just check the box on this picture. And I'm gonna go back through these and I know that these ones here I wanna keep. So all of your keyboard shortcuts still work here. So you have your picks and your rejects. So the P for pick, X for reject. I know that some of these here I wanna pay attention to later. So I'm gonna actually mark these as picks. The ones where he's off the ground. That one, I mean, he's barely off the ground. I'm not gonna mark it as a pick. And these ones here are kind of boring. So again, I'm gonna just mark these to get rid of because there's just absolutely nothing interesting happening here. All right. Okay, and that switched me to the next set. Now I'm gonna scroll back here to where we started marking them off and go later on in the set. Again, he's off the screen. So I'm gonna just scroll back to the first one here. And most of these, yep, there is nothing interesting happening here. And that was just me holding down the shutter, wanting to get that moment where the car lifted off the ground. So out of this set, there are like three that I wanna work on, one that I wanna keep just cause he's a little bit off the ground. And I've now marked those. I can hit the back button 
to go back and I can see out of these 20 shots, there are only four here that I want to keep. Now I can go through and work through many, many different sets here if I want to spend some time, or if you want to just do a little bit at a time, I can go from here and know I want to get rid of those images. I can hit delete checked and it's going to tell me, do you want, you know, do you really want to delete 16 files? And if you do, that's going to save me 425 megabytes of space. That's pretty awesome. So I can go ahead and hit delete. And now if I go back to that folder and let's see, that was this, this folder here. And I can then filter, let me clear the filter that I had before, turn the filter back on and I'm gonna go over here to flag and find those ones that I flagged as pics. And these are different ones. And I think I have two different folders of drag race images, but I can then go back and find the ones that I wanna work on and continue with my editing process. So I, I really love this declutter feature. Good, good. Well, I hope you guys are seeing that this really makes it easy to um, modify things and to be able to organize your stuff remotely. Um, I just find it invaluable to have my whole photo library with me at all times. Uh, and then I love keeping this on my laptop. Uh, Angela, can you explain the little A and R, uh, those little letters in the corner there? So like, this is how you can control on your laptop the quality of the file. Absolutely. So what this means right now is these are auto optimized. If I click on that letter, you'll see that it's auto. I can force it to load the preview so I can have all of the previews available on this device. And this means that they're on my device. Even when I take my laptop and go sit at the coffee house, these will be stored locally on this computer. Or I can say I want to have the originals available because I want to do some external editing. I can do this on a folder by folder basis. And if I go up a level here, and I go into 2022, you'll see that this one has an O. I have marked it so I have all of my originals from this year stored locally on this computer because those are the ones that I'm most likely gonna be working on or ones that are current to this year. So even if I take my laptop and go, if I have no internet connection to talk to my computer that's at home, I can still get to my originals because they're stored locally on this computer. Next year, I can say I can move this back to auto and then set my 2023 folder to be originals only. I can also go into that 2022 folder and I can change that policy for any one of these subfolders. And that's just, it's amazingly convenient. And it allows you to be able to work wherever you are. It sometimes takes a lot, little bit of planning. So if you know you're gonna be off the grid entirely, that you download those originals so you have them with you so you can work on them. Definitely, definitely. Yep. So There's some um, other annotations here that also might be helpful. As you'll yeah. see here, you have a number and then a folder and then a one. This means that there's 86 photos in this folder and one subfolder. And so some of these don't have subfolders, so it just tells you the number of photos that are available there. So that's also helpful to know. So you can get an idea of, wow, you know, this, is, this macro workshop, this might have either focus stacking, which are images that I want to keep, or a bunch of similar photos that I might need to get rid of. So. There's, you know, a lot of different ways that you can navigate around and clean things up. And it's just, it's so incredibly helpful. And cool. you can do it from anywhere. Besides that ability to do all of that, Milio's editor is actually fairly robust. You saw the editing tools, but there's this other feature down here called the clipboard that I actually like a lot. So Milio clipboard is useful. So like, let's say you wanted to build out and uh, you said, hey, I want to go ahead and search by five stars. So sort by uh, pictures here. So I'm going to go to the all photos view and I'm going to sort by ranking, by rating. There we go. And let me go up here to the five star pictures, right? And so you can now be looking at your library and then say, hey, that's cool, but go ahead and filter that and only look in my main photo library. Great. So now I'm seeing five-star photos from my entire photo library. So now I could just start doing things like grabbing, there we go, and just start putting stuff there in the clipboard. So you can actually drag items 
into the Mylio clipboard if you want and select them or click add and it will actually put it there in the clipboard. So as you're kind of going through, you can build up a really quick album. And remember, these are all still raw. So, you know, you can really quickly make basic edits if you need to. And just start to build up that collection. And then you can easily share them. And so the benefit here of the clipboard is that I'm able to actually look across multiple folders all at once and add those together, right? And so it's really kind of cool. I can drop back out to the grid, scroll a little bit later in my five-star photos. Oh, okay, cool. Let me look here. Oh, this was a good trip. Sure, let's go there. And so you can keep browsing through. And when you find something that you want to keep, just tap the button to add it, right? And so it's super simple to navigate. Oh, good. Here's some more flowers from a different trip. Add, right? And so I can just be browsing for flowers from all the different places I visited around the world. And I'm just looking here at the thumbnails, which makes it quick and easy. And I could find those searching across all of my folders, right? Now I'm in Croatia. Add. See how simple that was? Like I'm literally just saying, show me my entire photo library and sort by the best photos first. Oh, cool. Now here I am in Portland. Add. And I could just be grabbing things from multiple photo shoots into that one clipboard. When you're all done, you could take everything on the clipboard and then you could actually move those around. So you could put them into a new folder or a new album or anything else. And so this is just really fun because it lets you quickly build up a selection of photos. Now- One thing I wanna mention, Rich, is yeah. if you find that sidebar where the edit tools are located, distracting as you're going through and looking, you can close that up. Yep. You just hit those little arrows there at the top and you can open or close that so you can free up some extra screen space. So when you're out on an iPad or a small laptop, you can have the tools available that you need and hide some stuff when you're not needing them. Yep. And so there I can make a new album and then I can just drag that into the album there. So there's flowers. And I could just add them all to that album. And we're going to be adding a, another feature very soon. So you can automatically do that right from here. So you could just go ahead and select them all at once and make a new album. But as you could see there, I can very quickly tap to grab them all and then just put them into that album. And now I've got all those pictures organized. And so it's kind of cool to be able to search across your entire photo library and say, find the best pictures of something and then start to grab and collate and build those together when you want to make a gallery or do some sharing. And again, it's all here. And with the tap of a button, I can go and share those to Instagram or Facebook or anywhere else because uh, I'm ready to post. All right, Angela, we got about five minutes left. I'm sure you have something cool you can share and then uh, tell people where they can go to learn more. Absolutely. So let me reshare my screen and I want to touch on editing. So I know we've talked a lot about editing. Rich talked about using Radiant. He showed it with, um, with Lightroom. And I think he touched on it briefly with Mylio, but I love working with all different kinds of editors, Radiant included. And one of the great things is you can open up multiple images at once. So let's say I want to edit this one that I have selected. Let's grab this one and this one. And I want to take all three of these over to Radiant. What I can do is go up to the photo menu and go into the open width and there's Radiant. Or I can just choose this one here because that was the last editor that I opened. And it's going to ask me if I want to edit the original or if I want to edit a copy with Mylio adjustments. If I've already done edits inside of Mylio, you can open this up and send a TIFF or JPEG or whatever you want to edit. If you're editing, TIFF is usually best. In this case, I'm going to send the originals. Go ahead and click continue. And that's going to actually open up all three of these images inside of, Radi inside of Radiant so I can make some edits. And it's going to choose the best settings for these. You can see that I was shooting from inside the car and I couldn't really tell that when I was looking at the really dark one, but now that it lightened it up a little bit, I can see a bit more of the context in the side of my husband's face. 
And I can take a look at these images and they're all nicely improved from what they were. And it detected the landscape night setting, which I think is great, which adds a bit of, you know, extra contrast, brightens up the shadows a little bit. It also adds some uh, noise reduction at the night setting, which I think is just brilliant. So it kind of saves these images and it saves me from having to go to a bunch of different plugins. These aren't art pieces. These aren't things that I'm gonna spend a ton of time on, but they are fun and I did wanna subtly improve them. And now that these three are done, there's really nothing else I need to do to them. I can go ahead and say, save all. And I can save them back to the same folder as the original. Um, there's a couple of different options here. If you wanna see the original next to your edit, you can just choose underscore radiant, or if you want my, my Leo photos to automatically stack your edit with your original, you can choose this underscore display. And that underscore display tells my Leo photos to stack it with the original. So it's only gonna show you your original. Your original is still protected. It's still available. You look in the file system, it's still there, but this stacks them together. So you're seeing your edit. Um, for most things, saving them back as a JPEG is good. Again, these are just snapshots, fun memories. I'm probably not gonna do anything other with them. If these were things that I was working on with my portfolio, I'd probably save these as a tip. But for this instance, a JPEG is just fine. Um, same color space, all of that looks good. I can hit save and that's gonna pop those stacked together with my originals back into my Leo photos. And then I'm gonna see those edits no matter where I am on my phone, my tablet, my computer, and I can close those jump back over here to my ILEO, and shortly, it takes a little while to scan, and for some reason, the scanning is really slow when I'm on Zoom. It never wants to cooperate, but it'll show up, and you'll, oh, actually, it did. It updated really fast. Nice of it to prove me wrong in a good way. Um, so there's my raw file. It's showing that I have the JPEG, and I have the XMP metadata file. So these are all of the files associated with this file name. Go ahead and click on that there, so you can see this is the edited version. If I ever want to get back to my original, what I can do is right click on this image and tell it to reveal in Finder or reveal in external. And you'll see there's that underscore display and here's my original raw. If I want to get rid of that display copy, I can just get rid of it. I can save over it or I can go here and just reopen my raw file if I need to get to it. Uh, Angela, if people want to know more, you mentioned you wrote the manual. Uh, what yeah. other resources does Mylio have on their site? So I just put a link to the manual into the chat so you guys can grab that. I'm going to grab a couple of other links. We have a great FAQ on our website that if you're interested in learning about, you know, it's mostly pre-purchase questions, but it's got some great information that you might need as you're making a decision of whether you want to add this to your workflow. So I'm going to grab that for you. And then we also have an awesome community. I'll grab a link for that as well. And our community is a place where you can go and talk with other Milo users, you can ask questions, you can share photos, and it's the place where we post news about the software first. So if there's an update coming, that's the first place you're gonna hear about it. We'll share new features that are coming. We ask for the opinion of our users on many, many things. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a lot of fun. You know, Angela and I are both fans of, of this concept of 3-2-1 backup, and Milo makes that really easy. So you wanna have at least three copies of your picture library. Um, it should be on two different media types, and ideally one should be off-site. So, you know, this means that, you know, you're storing it in different locations on different types. Now, this two different media types, a lot of people bend this rule and they just use, you know, two different hard drives, which is fine, but um, I'm totally paranoid. And so I go a step further and actually keep like my photo library backed up to linear tape, which is super expensive, but, uh, the cloud could count as a backup as well. Um, there's lots of ways of doing that. And by keeping them off site, that makes it simple. So you could sign in on a computer at work or, uh, you know, you can sign in on a, a different device and, and plug in a hard drive and let Milo back up there. Or you can unplug a hard drive and, you know, take it off site with you and then bring it back once a month and plug it in and let it sync and then unplug it in the morning and take it back to work with you and store it off site so that if you were to have a flood or a fire at home, you wouldn't lose your photo library, which is pretty important. So um, you could check all that out, but ideally you're gonna have at least those three copies stored on two different types of media and keep one of them off site. So um, pretty straightforward, Mylio makes this automatic. So once Mylio Photos is installed, it'll keep backing it up. 
It just runs. Um, if you go to Photo Focus, we've got a bunch of articles about um, 321 Backup, so you can check that out. Uh, there's a great website called DP Best Flow that I did some writing for. This is from the American Society of Media Photographers, and they have a whole workflow about backup. And uh, Milio also has a whole webinar that I did with them all about this topic that you could find on YouTube. So if you want to go really deep into how to keeping your library backed up and safe, uh, I'd encourage you to check that out. And again, like Angela said, it's totally automatic. So once you've plugged everything in, your devices are just running. Like right now, my computer here needs two pictures. So one of my devices that's currently turned off has two photos that my computer needs. But all these other devices are in sync. And as I go down here and I look, I see, oh, my iPad needs a picture. As soon as my iPad is open and Milio is running, uh, it will detect it, even if it's on a different network. If I launch my phone, and Milio's running, or even in the background now on the phone, it can run. When these connect, those the devices will start to talk to each other. There, the iPad came online. It's going to get that picture that it needs. And as soon as my phone comes online and it's detected, it will also start backing up. So right here, these are my vaults. And I can see that, you know, they need a few pictures, but this one's all backed up. And right now I'm syncing everything to the cloud, which takes a little bit of time, but it's all backing that up as well, keeping it safe. So Milio just makes that really precise so you can keep your library totally safe and again, completely automatic. So let me just turn on cellular data on my phone. It is good. And it will connect and then start to back up. Well, Angela, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you guys found that helpful.